Hey everybody, welcome back to GDPG, and we hey. are playing survival mode in Primal Carnage. Extinction. Extinction. I fixed it. <laughs> um, so off the bat, Ooh. this map looks drastically different than anything we've seen. Well, the the old map still exists too. Yeah, uh, we didn't. We haven't checked that one out to see what's different about it. But, mm. um, but yeah, we're in what a volcano, I guess. Yeah, yeah. it must be a volcano. Um, but it's beautiful. Actually, I'm glad that we picked a different map because the the devs did. I, this is the phrase of the playthrough. Um, the devs did communicate that um, they wanted the other maps to feel bigger and different. Wow! Woo! This gun is amazing! <laughs> Especially when you shoot him in the head. <laughs> it's, that was um, satisfying. That was crazy. Um, $50 per dino? Yeah, buddy! Oh, Why that didn't blue? kill him. I don't know, because he's um, tougher. So, they wanted the maps to feel bigger and uh, oh, geez. Uh, drastically different from one another. And that's, so far at least from the visual aspect, that is definitely ringing true. Um, oh, absolutely. As being like a, a visitor center or an outpost or something like that. An outpost. We've, We've complete. complete. <laughs> yeah. Um, plus, I wonder if they have a little bit of, like, lore about, like, what organization found these dinosaurs? Or were the dinosaurs man-made? You know, like, similar situations like that. Yeah. Wait, did they add that lore, or are you saying... I don't know. I just think it would be kind of cool if oh. they had, you know, a little bit of information on the, uh, yeah, that the is... lore and stuff like that. Because I know that, I mean, it, especially if it's a game that has a role-playing well, community like this does. Well, that that's a question, then. Do you think that if they had lore, established lore for the game, do you think that would help or hurt the role-playing community? Do you think that would give them sort of a basis, or do you think it would, like, kind of shit on their show? To add, uh, to to sort of answer the question, I'm actually going to bring up Guild Wars 2. Okay. Guild Wars 2 is an MMO that I've been playing on and off for a little bit. I, I love it. I think it's cool. It breaks a lot of the tropes and whatever. It has a really, really active uh, roleplay community, and I find myself kind of doing that sort of stuff because it's fun. It's it's more freeing than just hitting the buttons all the time. You know, it, it, it's about camaraderie and all that stuff. Now... A lot of the role players go off of the lore that is set for the world and everything uh, prior to the release of the game, because this is Guild Wars 2, not the first one. Yes. Um, some of the ele story elements have carried over. A lot of other people, though, prefer to have their own sort of story and, like, their own sort of explanation as to what kind of a character they're playing and what story they're telling and what world they live in. Um, and I think by having that lore in there, it certainly doesn't hurt, because if people are going to be making up their own story as to how, why things are the way they are, they can do that anyway, even if the lore is out there. It's if you shove it down their throats, <laughs> that's when things kind of get a little weird. Like, uh, uh, if uh, like, uh, I, don't I don't like really the shaking. How, to, how it would, like, upset them or anything like that. So, I think, basically, having access to that lore is, if anything, just something else to kind of lose yourself in. I, so I actually, I agree. Um, I think that it helps give them a better nice. starting place, which actually might ooh, might help uh, that role-playing. Oh, man, I need health. I need health. I need health. Oh, boy. Oh, they are just every... I can't jump over oh. that, and I'm dead. Health. Well, let's check out another level then. Yeah, do it. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think that gives them a better starting place, which means that they, in turn... Um, can focus on like more in-depth role playing a lot faster, yeah. Because then there's less to establish right off the bat. So the, if so if they choose to, right? Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. Like it, there's nothing forcing them to actually role play off the established lore mm -hmm. too. So I'm I'm curious to see if they have already done that or are planning on doing that for anything. Especially if cool. the role playing community is robust. That's exactly what I was gonna say. If they're really making sure that they give that role playing community everything that they could need. Why not include a little bit of lore for people who want to just kind of jump in and read a little blurb on what's going on in the world so that that way everything else they kind of learn as they go. That's sort of how I operate in uh, Guild Wars 2 is that there's a lot of lore for that game. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so much shit. I shouldn't say shit. There's so much <laughs> there's stuff, a lot of stuff. Um, because it's a world that they made. You know, you kind of have to have a lot of lore associated with it. Um and I don't know why, but you running around with a flamethrower in a river just doesn't... just It doesn't work in my brain. Why? Because it's... 
Being being in a river with a flamethrower is probably either one of the best or worst things, I guess. Yeah, because if you're going up against a human, they catch fire, they take a dive in the water, and then they come back up. Well, not necessarily. I like there's some things like if it's I don't know how flamethrowers work exactly, but if it's spraying oil, well, if if it's spraying oil, then it actually will stick a lot better than that. Um, especially if you shoot the if it shoots oil, um, then the oil will just float on the water, and mm. then you can just like accidentally kill yourself because the stream will just like oh. bring it to you. Ooh, uh, I is, do like that your nice. thinking voice came out there for a little bit. My thinking voice. Your thinking voice. Well, see when they put with oil. Oh, what the Where I like fumble and then I like is it get quiet. Yeah. <laughs> Do I talk to myself? Is that what it is? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. It I'll take fine. it. I'll take what I can get. I don't have a thinking voice. <laughs> I don't really think a lot. <laughs> um so what feels different so far? It with... feels bigger. Okay. Like much, much bigger. Um and I can say that for pretty much the game as a whole too. Even team deathmatch stages, they felt bigger and more full, I guess. Oh yeah. Um, and even the survival mode so far feels a lot larger. Now, one thing I'm looking for that I haven't quite seen yet is... So we're collecting money, right? Yeah. And we can purchase things by spending... Like, we can purchase, I think, new weapons and stuff by mm. spending the money. New weapons, You, uh, I think it also unlocked, like, parts of the level, too? Yes, and that's what I'm looking for. I haven't... I don't think I've seen that yet. Mm. I might have passed it up in the last stage. And I, I'd be very surprised if they... Uh, took that out. Now, one of the things that I think it was Call of Duty Black Ops did for the zombies mode was that there was a little icon that would um, show up on your um, screen uh, showing you where something you could unlock was. I, I think that was Black Ops. Was it was um, it on like a mini map or was it actually on the screen? No, like on one of the uh, on the screen. Like so, you mm. just see it through like the the walls and stuff like that you'd see a little like dollar sign or something showing you where you could upgrade or uh, access new mechanics or new parts of the level do you think that this would benefit with from with that? the maps being bigger do you think that the, it would benefit from having that sort of thing it really really depends on what they're going for so the reason it worked in call of duty is because the uh, the actual survival mode levels were um the starting zone was very small. Mm -hmm. And so the idea was that the player would be moving through the environment a lot faster and exploring things um, in order to survive. Uh -huh. Now, since this is a rather large starting zone, um, maybe it's not about that, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think having that take up s screen space or even maybe just be on the screen. Oh, boy. Oh, no. oh. That sucks. So yeah, I don't I don't know. It might just be a distraction that's kind of annoying, especially if mm. like you're not doing a lot of that in the levels. In that case, here's one modification I will put in there. Mm. In between rounds. They would uh, show up. Because you do okay. have like that solid twenty or thirty so seconds letting you know like, okay, you have a solid amount of time before the next wave starts. Do you think them showing up only in between and you could still have access to them and still activate like the supplies and stuff like that? Um, during the round, um, but do you think that that would be a good way of kind of balancing that? What just happened? I don't know. Why are we back here? I did something. I don't know. Something happened. Oh. Let me go ahead and try Pathfinder again. Um, I like Pathfinder. I, I actually really like that idea. Yeah? Just because so, that, that way would... would... That would be kind of nice, actually. Now, now, mind you, these maps are supposed to be bigger because you're supposed to be playing with a lot more people. And obviously, we're not going to be able to discover everything in a map with just one person because we're trying to survive at the same time. And True. when you have more people, more people can go and find things. But I feel like having that one little thing in there to let people know, hey, there's something over here you can go buy, <laughs> um, go and check it out, couldn't necessarily hurt. If anything, it would make things a little bit easier because you know where you you would be able to find where certain things are a little bit easier. No, absolutely, and and yeah, like obviously, I've had a hard time finding some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it would be nice. This this is really what's confusing me. I See, I feel like I feel like what they oh. did is that oh, those are eggs. Yep, they are. I'm also um, already almost dead because I'm too distracted. I feel like what they did is for the like 
uh, map changing um, things you can buy, I feel like they made it so you can only activate those in between rounds. Because if... Well, I don't know. Because you've come across a couple of those blinking red symbols before, and I wonder if that's like a turret that you can activate, or a mine or Let's something see. like that. Yep, there you go. You upgrade the sentry, that's what it is. Whoa, but oh. it's not even... Oh, I bet I have to follow these power lines and do something with it. Oh, oh man. that's pretty cool. Okay, now I all really right. want to find this out. Oh, the ground's already rumbling. Uh-oh, that's not... Oh. So then do we turn it on? Yep. Oh, you have 450. Oh, that's so cool. That's awesome. Bravo. That's, yeah, that's, that's super cool. See, I'd almost take that over having a modular level where you purchase access to yeah. the new zones. Having um, a big game-changing mechanic get unlocked. Yeah, you're you're actually purchasing upgrades and building up a defense yeah. in, in this environment. That's because, cool. I mean, Call of Duty, it makes no sense. Why would you need money in order to... I mean, I guess, same thing here. Why would you need money for some of these things? But, like, why would you need money in order to unlock a door? It just seems yeah. kind of silly. Oh, you silly. have enough. You have enough. Do I? Oh, yeah. hell yeah. Oh, hell. Oh. oh, hell no. Don't die before you get there. Are things oh, falling? Yeah. Is that what's the rumbling? Percent. I don't know. Actually, I did notice that the last time you were in this level, the alarms and stuff started to go off. So you got to wonder, is it just a static level? Or does the lava start to rise? I wonder if it does. That, oh, that oh, wait, be... that's my sentry. Wait, did I turn that on? Yeah, you oh, upgraded that... it. The, the lava is rising. It totally is. That's that's super cool. Oh, my God, this level's amazing. And I'm sure the other ones are just as crazy, too. Oh, wait, did this open? Oh, no, this is where the dinos come yeah. from. Okay, that's, wow, yeah, this I... Is, this drastically shifted from the last time and that's awesome. Yeah. I'll wow, be... you do not want to be on this platform for very much longer. No, probably not. Oh man. Oh man. This is awesome. This is cool. It adds that extra level of urgency to what's going on. So I wonder if it like rises and falls. Um well, because it can only rise so much right before like everything gets cut off and then suddenly the dinosaurs can't even like reach me. Well at the same time though I feel like there has to be that same level of balance. You don't want to have an an infinite number of rounds where you're able to just like sit there and camp and do whatever because then it eventually gets old. Right, absolutely. There's only so many wave variations you can have. So I wonder if they have a wave cap, like 20 or something like that. Um, and in order to kind of add a little bit of urgency and keep things fresh, every time a wave comes in, the lava rises, making it more difficult mm -hmm. for the players and dinosaurs to continue to do their thing. So so I bet it works in cycles then. Um, Probably. Where, you know, after s X amount of waves, um, the map sort of resets and the lava lowers, and then the dinosaurs just get more difficult. Yeah, I think that's... And I, I think the dinosaurs are already getting more difficult, so it's like they're both increasing in difficulty, and then it kind of lowers, and in, then in the next, like, cycle, everything is just a little mm -hmm. bit more difficult. Um, oh, oh that's beautiful. man. Although... What if the dinosaurs can just, like, run on the lava? That would be terrifying. That would, would be terrifying. It wouldn't really make sense, but it would be terrifying. I f hunt raptors. Uh, I... F oh, oh, no! Damn it, these guys are back! They're back! Visible dinosaurs. Oh, oh, man. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, man. Boy. oh boy. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Um, if you die here. If you die here. Gonna kill you. Oh. Oh. I think I did it. You say that. Gonna get some the round hasn't ended yet. I know. Oh, there's more. There's oh. definitely more. Wait. Oh. No, no. Oh, I thought there might have been out there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, there oh. Go. And with that, <laughs> we we are out of time. We're actually out of like are those... 14 minutes. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Oh, those are all just different classes. Yeah. But yeah, okay, it's so... The, it's the cutscene showing that the humans did not survive. <laughs> Fair. Uh, question of the day. Do you think that they're using the openness of the survival maps, like the whole largeness of it, um, to the fullest potential? Do you think that there's something more they could add to kind of utilize that space? Or do you think it's spot on with the, you know, changing environment and the upgradable stuff and all that jazz? So, uh, Weirdly enough, do you also feel that the lore would also sort of fit into the reason for these maps and why you're in a volcano and stuff like that? Just kind of go into... There's only one question of the day, Cujo. 
All right, thanks everyone for watching. See ya.